Hello everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about what is hernia, what are the types of hernia, why hernia happens, what symptoms or complications can happen if hernia is not treated at the right time, what can hernia be treated with medicines and what is the difference between a laparoscopic hernia surgery and an open hernia surgery, advantages and disadvantages of each. So to start with, what is hernia? The main vital organs of the body are divided into three body parts, the head, chest and the abdomen. We have brain in the head, we have heart and lungs in the chest and we have multiple organs like liver, pancreas, small intestine, large intestine, kidneys, urinary bladder, in addition ovaries and uterus in females. And to start with the head, the brain inside the head is protected by skull, the brony protection and the heart and lungs in the chest are being protected by a bony protection called the ribcage. And when it comes to abdomen, in spite of having multiple organs, there is no bony protection for the abdomen. The only protection abdomen has is nothing but the muscle. If there is some weakness or in medical terms we call it as a defect. If there is some weakness of the abdominal muscle, what happens whenever there is rise of intra-abdominal pressure like happens during coughing or lifting heavy weights. When the abdominal pressure increases, the intestine inside the abdomen just because it has got a small weakness so that it can come out, it tries to protrude out through that weakened muscle. In such situations, it is called as a hernia. Next comes, what are all the types of hernia? Most common hernias are the umbilical hernias, which happens at the level of umbilicus, navel, inguinal hernias, which happens in the groin region. Let's talk about umbilical hernias first. Why an umbilical hernia happens? To further discuss about umbilical hernia, let us date back to the period where a baby grows in the mother's womb. When the baby is growing in the mother's womb, the only communication between the mother and the baby will be the umbilical cord. So, in a wall, we have created a small window so that the umbilical cord can come in. So, once the baby gets delivered, the umbilical cord falls off and the window for umbilical cord gradually is covered by the surrounding muscle. So what happens is after the childbirth, the muscle surrounding the umbilical cord slowly approximates thereby leaving no gap in the muscle. But still this site may remain as a potential site for future hernias. So what happens especially in post pregnant females or in obese individuals or in persons who are having chronic cough, maybe because of smoking or because of tuberculosis or be it whatever the cause. In such cases, for example, take for example, pregnancy or obesity. What happens during pregnancy or obesity? There will be complete stretch of the abdominal muscles, maybe because of the underlying growing baby or because of the fat. So what happens when the abdominal muscles completely stretches to the maximum possible extent? The umbilicus which was completely approximated by the muscles earlier at the time of childbirth slowly may start going apart thereby the gap which used to not exist now come, come into existence. So through this gap if the intestine tries to come out then it is referred to as umbilical hernia. Next, let us discuss about why inguinal hernia happens. So, to know further about inguinal hernia, in which population we can commonly encounter inguinal hernias is. These hernias, mostly inguinal hernias, occur 99% only in males. These inguinal hernias happening in females is a very rare entity. Why it is restricted or why it happens mostly in males is. Before that, we need to understand about the development of the testis. When the male child is in mother's womb, the testis which normally resides in the scrotum, it doesn't happen in when we are in mother's womb. When we were in mother's womb, the testis used to reside just by the side of the kidneys. But slowly, when the child is about to get delivered, slowly the testis pierces the abdominal muscles, creates a gap, leaves the abdomen through that gap and enters the scrotum. Why it has to leave the abdomen and has to enter the scrotum? Because of one single reason that 
for testes to produce a quality sperms the temperature in the testes has to be low if it is residing in the abdomen which is covered by multiple layers the temperature of the testes may be high for that reason what happens to the testes is it pierces through the muscle leaves the abdomen and enters into the scrotum just before childbirth the testes has created a small window in the abdominal wall to leave the abdomen and to enter the scrotum so once after the childbirth this window slowly gets closed by the surrounding muscle but still that may remain as a potential site for hernia in the future so as discussed maybe because of obesity or chronic smoking or chronic cough or increased intraabdominal pressure because of lifting heavy weights be it whatever the reason if that window gets opened up because of build up of the intraabdominal pressure that results in something called as an inguinal hernia this inguinal hernia can happen on one side or can happen on both sides and most commonly this inguinal hernias occurs in the age group of 25 to 35 40s or in the late 50s in late 50s if it happens it is because of the weakened abdominal muscles